Hi everyone, it's Non, and this video is a continuation of the dramatic classic body type analysis that I just uploaded. I apologize for breaking these up into two, but as I was editing, I realized that that first video was running a little bit too long. I think I had a little too many examples and too many segues in that video. It's been about a month since my last upload, and I think I just kind of fell out of keeping time, and I really didn't realize how much I was speaking until I was in the editing process. I do apologize for that, but after this, I should be able to get back to my regular speed for both recording and uploading. In any case, let's discuss dramatic classic hair and makeup. Hair should be sculpted and sleek, a geometric shape with angular edges. Blunt cuts are great for this type although some layering is possible depending on the texture of the hair. The length should be short to moderate, although if the hair is very fine, then it's better served by an ultra short, sleek hairstyle. For this type, we're always going for a sculpted, sleek look. Any asymmetric detail, such as a side sweep, is excellent because, again, that diagonal creates that sharp line that really aligns with the sharpness of their bone structure. So here, all of these women look great in these styles for various reasons. Starting to the left, Diane Kruger, I see that very sleek sort of hairstyle. It is curled, but the hair itself, you can see, has been done and it has that sense of polish, which is important, but also that diagonal of that side sweep. Very chiseled. She looks beautiful. Her bone structure really comes to the forefront and it complements her beautifully. Gugum Bataro to her right has that geometry. I see that triangular shape of the hair. And again, that is very much in alignment with the bone structure and her curls are beautiful, but it has that sense of elevation. She just looks lovely. Olivia Munn is showing us how a blunt cut works for this type. The hair is a little bit teased, but that's okay. It still works. It looks very fun on her, but that bluntness really works with the bone structure of this type. To the right, Gugumba Taro has again that geometry, but this time she's going for a more sculpted and sleek look. It's curled, but it has just that sense of being sculptural. It stands on its own. It has all of that detail to the side, but the shape is very much firm and in place, and I think she looks great. And then Olivia has that long, sleek hair and that depth of color, looking like she just did it very much harmonious and flattering on her. You want to avoid ornate or lavish hair. So here all these women have these very ornate styles. These look very youthful, very much like ringlets you would have on a little girl. And that sort of youth in feeling doesn't work with the mature nature of this type. So they all just look a little bit separate on them. I have the desire to take a brush and comb out those locks so that the resulting hair can have a much more relaxed curl and a higher sense of polish and sophistication and that would suit them better. So here we have Diane Kruger and in this style she looks incredibly disheveled. That type of hairstyle really requires somebody more in the natural family. On her, because she is a dramatic classic, that need for polish clashes with this wash and go and very minimal sort of styling. And I have every desire again to bring products and brushes and a straightener, anything to give it that sense of her hair being done. This looks very separate from her. This just doesn't suit her and she looks very much lacking in polish. It looks it takes away some sense of sophistication from her. Avoid fantasy hairstyles. So here we have that sleekness brought back and comparing these two bottom looks to the one right above it, she obviously looks better in the bottom because you can see that styling was done, right? That's very important for that elevated look. However, these are a little bit too ornate in that. So they are very much giving me a sense of fantasy. She looks okay, but it does look a bit costumey. So there's that separation between herself and that hairstyle. 
it's too much in that stylized and done up way. So on top, it's too little. I need her to do more styling. And at the bottom, she's done too much. And the classic is really about finding that balance. Avoid overly layered styles. So here we have Gugu Mbatero and Olivia Munn. Starting with Gugu to the left, her curls are beautiful and they suit her wonderfully, but the shaping of this hair lacks a geometry and a sharpness in the lines. So it's very much just layered and very relaxed in a way that again would better suit a natural type. For her, it's feeling very undone and I want to give it a defined shape so that that's how she would pull in that sense of polish that is currently missing. And in Olivia Munn's case, again, those curls and that color, which we'll discuss later, but they're, the shape of the hair, again, is a bit too relaxed. It lacks that sharpness, that sleekness. I don't see the lines required for this type, and they both just look okay. Avoid wash and wear styles. So to the right, we have Diane Kruger, and you can see in that style, she looks as though she just washed her hair and then she clipped it back and went. Again, something very much better suited to a natural type, but for a classic type, she looks as though she forgot to do her hair and I want to get in there and put product, straighten it, comb it, brush it, something. Likewise, in Felicia Rashad's case, and I think in Felicia's case, it's even less flattering because of the length of the hair, so it really drags her down. It looks as though she forgot to brush her hair and it just doesn't at all work for her. Lastly, avoid symmetrical styles with no angles. So up top we have Olivia Munn again, and the style just really does nothing for her. There's not too much to say about it, but it's not serving her. And it's that lack again of any sharpness, any sleekness. There's no geometric lines. It's sort of just there. And in her this case, it's further pulled away from her by the ornateness of those earrings. That symmetry, again, is further emphasized. And it's just not one of her best looks. I did want to quickly touch on Gugum Bataro's case, where I discussed that she should stay away from this sort of hairstyle because it could be easy for somebody to misinterpret me and think I talking about her natural hair as a style and that isn't the case her hair is stunning and i love it when she wears it what i'm really referring to by her distancing herself from this sort of style is that lack of shape and that lack of structure so here this feels very relaxed very much like she just woke up and she went and it takes something away from her. Those little flyaways in the middle of her hair at different lengths and what seems like haphazard layering, which as somebody who has natural hair, I don't have Gugu's exact texture, but I very much understand the amount of effort that goes into these sort of hairstyles that then look like they are effortless. So in the back of my mind, I'm aware of what I'm saying. But when it's styled like this, it gives the impression of very little effort being put in. That effortlessness is something that we associate and that harmonizes best with the natural type and it just looks amazing on them. That main kind of hair, that tousled effect, that's what she's giving me in this picture. And it doesn't gel well with the requirement for that cleanness and sophistication and sleekness of the dramatic classic. So let's compare her again in her natural hair with her curls in this image to the bottom right as compared to the first one. And you see what I mean. Suddenly she is a lot more harmonious. I think she looks far better to the bottom, much more like herself and a lot more elevated because those coils are so much better defined and the shaping of the hair has more of a geometry to it. Those things are so important for her. She looks transformed, in my eyes anyway. And this is what 
polish looks like in the case of natural hair. So it's not a requirement that she gets rid of her curls, not at all, but the definition and the shaping of those curls becomes important. In these last two images, she is wearing her curly hair, but here she's loosened her curl because part of the fun of having textured hair is the ability to move within the spectrum of how curly you're going to have it. So here it's looser, in this case, because of that loosening of the curl, it does move more towards that sleekness of the hair and the suits her much better than that first image. So there is a spectrum with which people with curly hair can play, but in each case, the geometry, that shaping of the hair becomes very important. I see this again with these hairstyles to the left where she has her hair tied back. The first look is much more relaxed and there's flyaway hair. It looks like she just tied it and she went. She looks great, but it's not her best. To the right, there's a lot more of that sleekness to the hair and it just feels a little bit more complete, a lot more flattering on her because of that seemingly visible effort that this has as compared to the other one. The same thing is true for Diane Kruger. Looking at her in these two styles, to the left, very much giving me that sense of natural wake up and go and wind in my hair tuzzled effect, but it doesn't suit her well. And then to the right, that sleek hair, suddenly she comes to life and she looks stunning. And comparing these hairstyles too, these aren't the same hairstyle, but they serve to compare just how much that sense of polish is important for this type and in particular for Diane. At the bottom that hair is a little bit too ornate for her as we discussed before that curling at the bottom and that shaping up top it's a little too soft but it is sleek and it is polished and you can tell that she put effort into her hair and that feeling of effort put in is very important for this type. On top is the opposite. It feels as though she puts zero effort into her hair and I'm sure she put a lot of it to get it to look like that. But that sort of style on her simply looks disheveled and undone and it's incredibly unflattering on her. And now compare these hairstyles which are pretty much the same but with a different level of styling going into it. Up top, it looks as though she just washed her hair and she went. And at the bottom, you can see there's a lot more styling. You can see that she curled her hair. There's that straightness in it because of the products I imagine and the tools that she used. And that difference is so incredible because she looks so much better at the bottom, even though the hair is curly and soft. It's much more flattering. She requires that sense of me being able to see that she put effort into her hair. And on top, it looks as though she forgot to do her hair. And lastly, here we see her with her hair pulled back. Looks so much better at the bottom where it's all sleek and there is no air or volume above it. That sleekness matches so much better with her chiseled bone structure as compared to the top where there is that little bit of lifting and weight to the hair and lightness to it. She looks okay, but as a direct comparison to the look beneath it, you can see that she looks much better at the bottom where she doesn't do any of that softness up top. And then looking at these images, I feel bad because I feel like I went on the internet and pulled her worst hair days but i'm doing it because i wanted to visually show just how drastic it looks on this type when the hair isn't done for a lot of us we have the ability to just wrap your hair up in a bun and leave without putting in too much effort the dramatic classic with a classic type that requirement for polish is such that they really can't do this. On them, it looks so drastic. You almost ask yourself, oh my God, what's wrong? And probably nothing's wrong. She just ran out of the house like the rest of us can do. So it's just one of those things where if this is your type, this is also true for the romantic type and maybe even more so for the romantic type. But for the dramatic classic, there has to be this sense of being put together. Otherwise, you really look so disheveled, more so than most of us would. Just something to be mindful of. Hair color. 
The dramatic classic requires a rich color base. So if you're somebody who has grays or dyes your hair for whatever reason, this is something that needs to be routinely maintained. That sense of your hair growing out doesn't look good for this type. It needs to almost look like you just left the hair salon every day. Growing out your hair will look very separate and very unsophisticated on you. You can see in these images that all of these women have a solid, rich color and they look amazing in it, be it blonde or brunette or the black hair of Felicia Richard and Olivia Munn. In each of their case, there's a solid color. It's distinct and it looks well-maintained. It looks like it was just done. And that sense of maintenance and again effort is what creates that sophistication that is so so important for this type you want to avoid all processes designed to soften the hair color so here we have felicia richard and i think we can agree that none of these hair colors are her best the first one she has that light brunette sort of blondie color and it's simply too light for her it becomes too muted it's now too close to her skin tone and it just looks very aging on her. In the middle, she has the black hair up top, which suits her so beautifully. But at the bottom, she has again that brown blonde sort of color. And that color doesn't suit her as we just saw in the previous image. But more jarring is the fact that she has these two separate tones. This isn't the kind of thing that suits this type. A solid color, that sense of sophistication is really important. And in terms of hair color, that means a solid color, top to bottom. What she's done here is very childish on her and really lacking in sophistication. And to the right, that salt and pepper sort of coloring just doesn't work on her. When going gray, this type almost has to choose if they're gonna go black or go white and then stick to it and have that solid color. And the way that this is meshing just makes it very, again, lacking in sophistication. And also the way that the hair is styled doesn't work. I want to brush it out, it's too wispy, but the color itself just is not solid enough for her. Compare all of these to that first image where her hair is solidly black and is well stylized and it has those curls and it's brushed through and she looks amazing and you quickly see just how separate these other colorways are from her. Likewise Olivia Munn, these highlights don't really work well for this type. The image to the right is more jarring because those highlights are thicker and more streaked and lack that polish to them. To the left, the Highlights are more gradual, which is much better. But again, that softening of the color is not her best look. Compare that to this all black solid color and you see what I mean. Here to the left, she looks at her most harmonious. She looks stunning in that colorway and it just meshes well with her. So a solid color is really important for this type. And lastly, I see this again on Diane Kruger. Here she's wearing her hair both blonde, but to the left, it's a lot more solid and distinct in its coloring. To the right, it's a lot more soft and diffused. And again, that would better suit a different type, perhaps a natural. The dramatic classic type requires an almost manufactured look, for lack of a better word. That suits them better than that soft, natural, sun-kissed sort of coloring, if that makes sense. And now let's discuss dramatic classic makeup. A smoky face with sultry eyes, strong cheekbones, and a vivid mouth completes your tailored, chic look to perfection. Matte colors are best. For evening, add just a hint of sheer frost. Emphasize your beautifully chiseled features with contrast and contouring. So I think that these women are doing a lot of these things beautifully. Makeup is a means of highlighting your best facial features. And the Dramatic Classic has a very chiseled bone structure, typically. Although, as we can see here, this is true for Gugumba Taro and Diane Kruger, but not necessarily for Olivia Munn. So again, take what works for you because everybody's composition is going to be different. But typically, the dramatic classic type has that chiseled bone structure. And when you have that sort of structure, 
the easiest way to harmonize with it is through contouring and contrast, but nothing too theatrical. It has to look very sophisticated, very polished, very light on the touch, but it has to be visible makeup, a clean face, and have that great foundation. And then a beautiful color on the lips really makes them pop, as you can see with all these women here. You want to avoid overly ornate makeup with heavy glitz. This is too unsophisticated on you. Here, that glittery eyeliner on Gugum Bataroa is too delicate on her and a little too unsophisticated. It's just too childish. They don't require that. As well as Olivia Munn, again, I'm sure this is for some sort of editorial piece and that's beautiful for that use. But in day-to-day -day use, that sort of eye makeup would just be too much and too youthful and lacking in sophistication. Avoid watercolor soft edges. This is very aging on you. This is similar to the first two images. On Olivia Munn, again, that eye makeup, too youthful, too unsophisticated. It stands out against the rest of her face, so there's that lack of harmony. And again, with Diane Kruger, it's not as bad because the colorway is more mature, but her eyes do really feel separate from the rest of her face. I think that sort of makeup but just a little less drastic would be okay because it's the drama, but it's not balancing with the rest of her face and for that reason doesn't quite work. Avoid pale lips. So as we saw in the first set of images, these women are beautifully flattered by a bright lip. And now we see what happens when they're missing that. In both these cases, these women just look very land and something's missing and they don't come to life in that same way. So a nice vivid color that suits them and their coloring is really important for this type. Avoid all neutrals with no smoky colors, again to aging, and no makeup looks as this will wash them out. Here we have all three of these women and I do believe they are all wearing makeup but it's that very subtle no makeup, makeup look, and it just looks very dull on them. It's lacking that sense of elevation and sophistication and being put together. They're just missing something, and I really want to give them a lipstick or another pass with some foundation, just something to kind of pull their look together because right now it feels too flat. So that's just something to be mindful of with this type. You want the makeup to be subtle and sophisticated, but definitely visible. And that bright lip color is always a great choice. And this last one is something that Kibi didn't include, but I feel is important for this type. I would say avoid makeup with overly intense aspects. And by that, I mean makeup that leans a little bit gothic and very intense in nature, like you have in these three images. Here, these women are overpowered by the intensity of these colors. It's just too dark on them, too stark against them. And there isn't that sense of balance. And balance is sort of a cornerstone of this type. Everything is very well blended out. So when there's an aspect of the makeup that is too intense, it pulls away from the rest of the face. And I see that first. So here in the first look, I see Olivia Munn's eyes as opposed to completely seeing her face. I see Gugu's lips as opposed to her complete face. And again, Olivia, I see her lips, but not her fully as a person. There isn't that sense of balance and this type really, really requires that. So just something to try on for yourself and see if it works with you. But in general, I would say always go for balance. And also the style of makeup. Gothic is very much dramatic in nature and the dramatic classic has the dramatic aspect in them but they are a classic first and foremost so this just becomes too heavy on them and too intense and they need to really pull it back towards that lighter more sophisticated more elegant style of makeup and with that i am done with the dramatic classic I would, as always, love to hear your thoughts and let me know if this is your type and if you agree with my analysis of the hair and makeup and the entire type as a whole. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. 
If you like the content that I'm creating, or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.